Hi everyone, Adrian from Audio Excellence Canada, Philip, Angus, and Alex behind the camera. So today we're going to talk about, uh, well, we, we've, we've gotten a, a bunch of emails suggesting that we do this topic, so we'll, we'll, we'll cover it relatively quickly because otherwise it would, it would go on for too long. Um, it's basically audio setup tips. How to set up your system in a way that, uh, or at least little tips that you can do to immediately improve the system. Um, there's a lot involved. Um, so this is not going to go uh, comprehensive, but I would suggest um, to start off with two very good books uh, that you can buy. Uh, one is by Jim Smith. Uh, I think he published back in the uh, 90s or 2000s, uh, Get Better Sound. And of course, Paul McGowan, who came up with um, Audiophile's Guide to Stereo. We did an interview with him where we talked a little bit about it. Um, Alex can maybe link the uh, interview in the uh, description box. Um, and those are great books, and and they go into tremendous depth uh, as to how you can set up your system and so on. But here are some quick tips. Philip, why don't you start? Uh, maybe let's start with speakers. How would you? Well, we use the Wilson way here, yeah. and that works um, for most things. No, it works well for all dynamic speakers. The ones that we carry, it definitely works. So that spot, finding the zone of neutrality and doing a few little... Yeah. And um, by the way, if, uh, if you want to know more about that particular procedure, sorry, Philip, um, you can Google on YouTube, and I believe David Wilson goes into some detail about how to do it. So maybe Alex can, can look into it and, and put the link in the description box. Uh, and certainly the rule of thirds works, where you place speakers a third into the room and you sit a third from the back of the room. Sitting, use, occupying only the works third. if your room is relatively long. Yes, it has to be that classic, you know, kind of like um, three to two. If you have a ten by twelve, it's <laughs> ten by twelve, but, but, but twelve by eighteen, you could definitely do it. Um, you occupy about the middle third. I sometimes use a rule of quarters in yeah. a quarter out from the wall and then a quarter in from the back of, of the room occupying a slightly bigger space. You can vary between those two things. But the b main thing about doing that is where the speaker placement is, uh, you will end up with the speaker totally disappearing. It will, and it will image like crazy. It doesn't really matter what the speaker is. As long as it's relatively accurate, it will image like crazy. It will totally disappear. And then you're sitting in a spot. Hopefully, you're not in a... Um, a nodo position where it's uh, 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 where the base is going to be um, um, reduced. You, you want it to be fairly even. So, so some room treatments would probably help. But being in that kind of position, you're away from boundaries, and uh, the reflections will be minimized. And just having a pair of mini monitors in that kind of position, it will totally disappear. It could be the least expensive mini monitor that you can find, and it will totally disappear. It's a pretty cool thing. I'm not saying it's the most musical thing, but it's definitely impressive. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so I'll give a couple of thoughts. Um, one thing, if again, if, if sound staging and imaging are important to you, make sure that the distance from the speaker to you are the same. So in other words, your left and right speakers are, uh, you don't want to have one speaker that's 10 feet away and another speaker that's 12 feet away. It, it, it screws up on your timing and imaging and, and so on. Um, also experiment with toe-in, in other words, the amount of angle towards your ears. Some speakers um, don't like to be angled much at all, so they're flat, and other speakers are towed in all the way into your ears, and some speakers are even uh, towed in so that they cross in front of you. So experiment with that and see which one you Definitely like. Definitely <laughs> look through the manual that comes with the speaker. Usually the manufacturer, they're very specific about how they want their speaker set up. They will tell you. So that's how we know what, what speakers need toe-in, what speakers don't require any sort of toe-in. And, 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 you know, it's impossible to predict based on just looking at the speaker. The, the designer will definitely have one idea or the other. As also, as a rule of thumb, it's a good idea to not have the same uh, distance or multiple off between the sidewall and the, and the front wall behind the speaker. So in other words, if let's say from the tweeter to the sidewall it's two feet, you uh, ideally want to not have also two feet from the front of the, the speaker to the back, uh, to the wall behind the speakers, um, or multiple off. So in other words, two feet 
four feet, that kind of thing. I don't know if I'm explaining myself well. Uh, am I? Am I? Well, yeah, you end up with nodal activity, which yeah. means that there could be cancellation yeah. happening. So, so let's say the tweeter to the side wall is two feet. Maybe you might want to try three feet from the front of the speaker to the uh, wall behind the speaker. Um, then the other thing also I've noticed um, years ago when sorry I was about ready to sneeze. I might still sneeze. Oh, this is terrible. Just because we'll <laughs> you out talked about it. Okay, you, you Alex, didn't cut sneeze. that out the post. <laughs> um, the other, uh, the People other are not allowed to see Adrian sneezing. <laughs> I just don't want to that. sneeze. You got to right, pay for that one. Yeah. Sneeze right into the mic. Um, the other thing that's also interesting is many, many years ago, back in the 80s, when I was playing with a lot of panel speakers, I met this particular gentleman who absolutely loved to experiment. And one day I went to his house and he said, you got to check this out. And I noticed that the soundstage height was dramatically better. And I asked him what he had done. And he said he tilted the speakers forward. So if you are listening to dynamic speakers or panel speakers and you're, and you're finding that the image height is a bit too short, try angling them a bit forward. Now be very careful, of course, so that you don't, <laughs> speaker doesn't fall over. But try that. And then, of course, make sure that the speakers are leveled uh, one to the other as well so that one is not flat and the other one's angled. The little simple things like this make can make a big, big difference. Um, Philip, you want to talk about things like the isoacoustics? So there's two schools of thought about how you... Um, well, a speaker, should it be anchored or should it be isolated? Um, I don't know which one is right. For many, many, many years, obviously, I anchored everything to uh, the biggest mass I could find, which is the floor. So that's why speakers have spikes, um, and you're supposed to attach it to something that's even more rigid that will absorb some of that energy in a, in a way that uh, allows the base to be very clear and precise. Lately, we've come across devices like isoacoustics, the Gaia's, that are essentially devices which reflect energy back into the speaker so that all of the energy comes out of the speaker instead of being absorbed into the floor in, in a fashion. I thought the Gaia's absorbed the energy. It, it, it keeps it within that structure. It doesn't, it's, there's going to be some rebound into it. Um, you know the like the the sort foots from from Nordos. They they do the same thing. What they're doing is keeping energy from going into on the a bigger mass, more massive structure. Um, I think both are. It just depends on what you like. Uh, Val from Acora definitely does not like any of those uh, isoacoustic devices. He specifically wants his speaker anchor to the biggest mass that you can get. Well, because he has like the biggest, heaviest speaker possible. Well, that's that's besides the point. You would think that it would be, relatively speaking, that speaker would be able to push out as much, you know, it doesn't absorb any resonance. It doesn't, there's no there's no uh, energy staying within the speaker. It's, there, it's there's coming. no space to move. Well, the entire really, thing's made out of granite, so. It's just that that resonate. granite can't retain energy. Yeah. It, it, it allows resonances to 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 go through it very very cleanly mm -hmm. and it doesn't keep any of it it doesn't slow it down it just transmits it out and um, it's very very controlled and he he likes to extend that by anchoring it to the floor yeah so basically check it out uh, isoacoustics is, is one of the brands there are others as well um, then the other suggestion let's talk about um, room acoustics um, so uh, uh, Angus can maybe take pictures of the, the room that we're in and show some of the uh, room acoustics. We've also done a video recently about Vicoustic or Vicoustics, as I was told, might be the name of the company. Vicoustic, no S, um, from Portugal. That's what it's called. Um, so there's basically two, two, two parts. There, there, there are more, but the two simple parts of acoustic treatment is absorption and diffusion. And so uh, for most people, um, if your room is uh, too bright and echoey, consider some form of absorption, which is basically to take the energy that's rattling around in your room and, and killing it, basically. Um, 
there are a number of ways you can do that. The the simple, inexpensive way is to use natural stuff that you would put in your room, like for example, bookcases. Buy a and, rug. Yeah, you can buy a rug, bookcases, you know, stuff that you would you would decorate your room with, and, and this way it looks natural. But if that's not enough, or if you've got a room that's very um, lively and very big and it's very echoey, um, then you may have to resort to um, room acoustic treatment. So um, the the V-acoustic products like the absorption products uh, can work really well. They they look quite nice. They're not too expensive. When I said that in the last video, a whole bunch of people said, you know, I guess your definition of, of not expensive versus mine is different. Well, then you can do whatever you need to do, but basically, very simply, put put uh, room absorption panels uh, on the first reflection points um, and um, start with that. And if it helps and you need more, then do more with the second reflection points. Maybe consider some behind your head, uh, between the speakers. If, if it's a dedicated listening room and you do whatever you want, then put some stuff on the uh, ceiling as well. Be careful, however, to not deaden the room. You want to have a mix of some liveliness with some absorption so that music still feels and has dynamics. Philip, anything you want to add? So uh, I was over at a friend's not that long ago, and uh, we were, of course, listening to a pair of speakers that they set up in this big, giant room, like a really big room, like really, really big, okay? You know, like one of those banquet rooms that we, we were using <laughs> before, like that size. I mean, maybe not that tall, but very big room. And... The system sounded a little bit echoey, and um, someone, some one of my other friends came up with this bright idea. He, he looked at, he, there were some pillows there, and so this room has a concrete floor, and there was no carpet in front, and he basically said, well, you know, let's take these pillows, and he put them what we, where we thought was the first reflection point in front of us, and it instantly, 75% of the problem of the room was gone, boom, right away. So the idea of treating for first reflection, if you can't treat anything else, like putting a carpet in front of you and don't put a glass coffee table in front of you, that will immediately help what you're hearing. Or in the sidewall where you can strategically place some sort of panel or maybe a wall hanging or a bookcase that will break up any kind of direct reflection of what we will call the first reflection point, that would definitely, definitely help. And that's not hard to do. Yeah. And you can just move some things around and see if it changes it, and then you'll know instantly. Or just listen to headphones. Simple. <laughs> <laughs> well, headphones. Like which headphone? <laughs> uh, what amplifier? You know, it's not that simple. Yeah. Uh, anyways, I said this is, this is not uh, a comprehensive video about room acoustics and things like this. It's just basic some things that you can look into. Uh, very easily to improve your system and to do some uh, stuff yourself without, in the case of setting up of speakers and so on, without any cost. Um, so um, uh, you have any comments or feedback? And of course, if you have thoughts and suggestions, please put them in the uh, comment box or the uh, comments below so that other people can read and learn from uh, all of us together. All right. This is Adrian from Body Accidents Canada, Philip, Angus, and uh, Alex behind the cameras. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.